Happiness cannot be pursued. You do not find happiness, happiness finds you. It is not an end in itself, but a byproduct of other activities often arriving when it is least expected. Our minds are analogous to hedonic treadmills. And what that means is that once one desire is sated, it'll be quickly replaced by another desire. So if you think that you'll be happy when you save up and buy a Maserati, what'll happen is for about six to 18 months after that, you'll be driving around your Maserati, and then one day somebody will go by in a Ferrari, right? And uh, your mind will say, dang, I should have bought the Ferrari. That'll make me happy. So you save up and you save up and you save up and you buy a Ferrari and you drive it off the lot and you're really happy for six to 18 months. And then somebody drives by in a Lamborghini and then you say, dang, I should have bought the Lamborghini. So that's what a hedonic treadmill is. The desire is actually more important than what is desired. There's a fascinating study called Accident Victims and Lottery Winners. And in this study, they calculated the happiness of people before accidents and before they won the lottery, and then they monitored them. And what they found was that about 18 months after people suffered from disfigurement or terrible things in car accidents, or if they had won the lottery, they were back to their original range of happiness. Your mind is a really interesting thing because it overestimates the things that will make you happy and it underestimates your resilience. The founder of positive psychology, Martin Seligman at the University of Pennsylvania, found that everybody has a range of happiness and there are tools that will keep you at the high end of that range and tools that will keep you at the low end of your range. Today what we're going to do is look at the tools that will keep us at the high end of our happiness ranges. I have a private practice as a psychotherapist and then I've also been touring teaching mindfulness and yoga to people all over the United States. And what I tell both my clients and my students is I don't heal anyone, I don't fix anyone, and I don't cure anyone. I share tools and that's what I'm going to do today. I found a bunch of tools that keep people at the high end of their happiness ranges and what I'd like you to do is think of this video as a dressing room. So you're going to try on a couple of different ideas, try and get a new perspective into um, the way you think about happiness and if any of these tools fit, you're free to keep them and then just leave the others behind.